everyone. Thanks for coming out to another Million Cups. We've changed our layout a little bit. We're getting more and more people every week. This has been really exciting. Uh, before we get started, we want to say thanks to our sponsors, um, the Arkansas Venture Center for, and the Little Rock Chamber for letting us um, host the event here, and the Kauffman Foundation uh, in Kansas City is the brand holder for Million Cups, and they're letting us use this brand and, and this format. Um, and Jordan's going to tell us more. Yeah, so every week um, we gather here uh, to go through an educational experience, but another part of this is trying to build our community. And an important aspect of that is engaging with our entrepreneurs through social media. Um, so many of you are entrepreneurs in, in the crowd who understand the importance of getting those impressions. So as these presentations go, uh, please, please, we highly encourage you to take pictures, live tweet, capture the great moments. Um, and then the Coffin Foundation will actually tweet us up so we get tweeted to a national stage. Um, it's pretty cool. So just want to make sure that you guys uh, have some happy thumbs. Um, without further ado, though, uh, we would like to welcome Tiffany Hamlin of Easy Discovery Solutions. Woo! Did you turn it on? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Can you hear? No. Okay. Good morning. I'm Tiffany Hamlin with Easy Discovery Solutions, and here with me today is my business partner, Meredith Causey. We are a software as a service company that serves attorneys conducting document review of any type, usually litigation related, but not always. And through the services we provide, we, uh, we make all documents searchable, saving attorneys time and money. We started Easy Discovery because only large law firms with IT departments have been able to invest in e-discovery software so far at this point in time. Um, small firms just simply can't afford a full hardware, in hardware software install, um, but they have to comply with the law and they can't ignore e-discovery law, e-discovery rules any longer. So what exactly are we talking about with e-discovery? I know typically we have a pretty tech savvy group that attends here each week. Let's run through just real quick about um, exactly what e-discovery is. So typically throughout the course of a, law a lawsuit, the document review phase is called e-discovery because everything that needs to be reviewed, all the documents, all the information is in electronic format. So e-discovery is electronic discovery. That's also where our name came from. Um, so currently in our market, there's two formats that are considered electronic. Native documents, which are the Word files, the Excel files, the Outlook files, and then PDFs of those native documents. But we're working with our market right now to educate them on the difference between the two because PDFs are not the same as native documents, and here's why. Native files have metadata. And all, that's all the information about a file that's on the background. You can't see it, but it's attached to every single file that's created. Um, but you have to have soft, special software to see it. And up on the screen, if you, oops, go back one. Um, up on the screen here is just some, some examples of metadata fields. Who created it? What computer was it created on? When was it modified? How was it modified? The changes made? That kind of stuff is what we're talking about. And a PDF is basically a picture of a native document, just like a scan. So when a, a native document is converted to PDF or a hard copy document is scanned to an image, that metadata is lost and it's no longer attached to that file. And sometimes that metadata is really important. So we can move on to the running through this, let's run through this example. So let's think through, if your case depended on who knew what about the issue at a certain point in time, you would want to know, you would want to look at all the documents relevant to that. So think about the tobacco cases or the Enron lawsuit. It was essential to know, to prove that executives knew what was going on at a certain point in time and took no corrective action. And if, you're, if your smoking gun is a printout of an email, you're only going to see a certain amount of information. There's no way for you to really know who actually saw that message. So the example here, this top box, is a printout. This is what a printout looks like from Outlook. So you'll see from the subject line to the date, all of that information. But if you look at the bottom box here, it's the native 
document, this exact same email in our software that now shows that Tom Smith was actually copied on this email. But if that's the only thing you've got is a printout or a PDF of that email, you would not have known that Tom Smith actually saw this, this message. So with that, um, what we're finding in our market is that nobody is really dealing with native documents. They're not dealing with metadata. They're pretty much only at the PDF format right now. So because of that, we're meeting them right where they are. If you go to the next slide. Um, we can take what currently happens with discovery is that an attorney will get a disk or a flash drive full of PDF documents, and they'll send that out to be printed so that they can do a hand-by-hand, -hand, a manual process. They love paper. Attorneys love paper. So we're trying to, to save them a ton of time. That's a huge waste of time, a huge waste of resources by doing it that old school way. So what we're able to do is take that same disk or that same flash drive of those PDF documents, process it into our software, and within a few hours be able to provide searchable documents that are accessible online. They no longer have to invest in a full solution. They can um, access our software through an internet connection in a browser now, and saving them a ton of time in their document review. So it, instead of be, having to flip through binders and binders of paper, they're able to find what they're looking for through a keyword search, and, which saves them a ton of time in deposition and trial. So we'll go ahead and move to the next one. Our services train, support, and save attorneys time and money throughout the entire litigation process. Um, our team regularly consults on what type of information to ask for, what format to ask for it in, how to, how to review that, that information when you receive it, um, and so, as well as a ton of other issues that come up throughout the e-discovery process. We also have Hosted Review, which is the software I've been talking about. We have licensed software with Digital War Room, which is an end-to-end e-discovery -end e software solution. So all you need is an internet connection and a browser to access our software through a secure login. Um, we also have Data Processing, which is our, our service that calls out all of the irrelevant documents. So if you do a huge document dump, you're going to get a ton of junk. We take all the junk out of that from the very beginning, saving attorneys time and their clients thousands in document review fees. Um, so let's, I've been making a lot of claims, we save money, we save time, so let's run through just a real quick case study. We recently completed a project for an in-house counsel at a large local corporation. Their initial data set was 32,000 documents. And through our processing, we were able to remove 30,000 irrelevant documents from the beginning, saving them, um, they, they sent, then they only sent 2,000 documents to outside review for counsel instead of the full data set. So we saved them about $90,000 on this one project alone. And here's how those numbers work out. If you, um, if we'll move to the next slide, 50, documents per hour is our is the average rate of document review it's just a standard average for an attorney with a review tool a hundred and fifty dollars an hour is about what you're gonna pay for a junior attorney in our market so just do the math thirty two thousand documents fifty documents an hour hundred and fifty dollars per hour is ninety six thousand dollars that you would pay for document review for that size um, in, in our market so by reducing that to two thousand documents we we shaved $90,000 off of one project right, right off the bat. We charged $3,200 for our service. Okay, Our pricing, we've got several different options. The easiest way to get started with us is a consulting plan that gives you access to our software as well as a set number of consulting hours. Um, that's the training piece. We, we use our consulting hours to really train attorneys on, on exactly what we're talking about with e-discovery. Data processing, um, for firms who have an in-house solution already, they have to pay in addition to the software that they already have, they have to pay for data processing fees on top of that. Our pricing is much less expensive than anything in the market, so we can save them money as well. And then obviously we'll take a look at any project that you may have from the beginning and give you an estimate based on the, the data set that you've got. Uh, we love to meet with businesses and attorneys and figure out how we can serve them, what their needs are and how we might be able to help. Um, Go ahead to the next. And we'd love to show you our software. So here's our contact information. Um, please give us a call. If you've got any, any questions about how we might be able to, to serve you as a business or as an attorney, we would love to, to meet with you. We're also trying to increase our online presence, our social media presence. So please tweet at us, follow us, um, and, and help us do that. We've got a blog, all of those things. So here's our, our Twitter handle, and that's what I've got. I'm going to pass it back to Jordan to mediate questions.
Good job, Tiffany. Thanks. Give a round of applause. Sure. Yeah. So do we have any questions? Hey, Tiffany, I'm RJ. I was wondering, can you talk a little bit about your customer base? Are you centrally located, central Arkansas, or do you service outside of Arkansas as well? Sure. We, um, we started here in Little Rock, both being my business partner from Arkansas, but we can serve. We're starting in this market because this is who we're familiar with. This is where we've got all of our connections, but we can serve anybody with an internet connection. So this is really um, for the U.S. right now, primarily the U.S. So we would love eventually to continue to grow and be able to serve any of those law firms, but right now we're just starting with our home base. John Riggins with the Riggins Group. Can you guys, uh, can you tell us a bit about y'all's team and uh, your background? Sure, absolutely. Um, I have an uh, IT background. I worked with Axiom for about, about a year and a half before I came over here full time. Um, but before that, I finished my MBA at Baylor. So I'm, I'm the business side of things. I've also worked in law firms in my past. Um, and so I've got a lot of the inside, understand what attorneys how they work, and then what how their staff what their staff needs to help them do what they do. Uh, so we've got a really interesting. I feel like those three things kind of pull pull together what I'm able to bring to the table. And then Meredith, I'll let her speak. And then I'm an attorney licensed here in Arkansas, but before going to law school, I worked for um, a large um, law firm in Washington, D.C. right whenever the rules had changed and people were having to learn um, all this new software and technology to comply with the e-discovery laws. And so that's kind of where I got a, a good understanding of how it worked and then um, went on to law school and, and so have the kind of the legal side where she does more of the business side. Could you tell us a little bit about um, how you got your first customers? Sure. Um, we actually, the, the project that we just talked about was our biggest project so far. And it was through um, an attorney that we know personally. And he said, hey, I've got a client that's, that's actually struggling through this document review and they're trying to save some money. Could you guys go meet with them? So that, that was how we, we got that biggest project. And then um, our, several of our clients are just either old old, um, you know, past conf com contacts, there it is, past contacts that we've known that we've been able to go back to and say, hey, we, we know what kind of practice you have, we know how we can help you. Um, but right now, it is really just through um, who we know. It's that network right now. How big are you? I mean, as far as, this sounds like a tremendous amount of work that you even having to get the computer to spit out. I mean, how many people have you got in there trying to spit this kind of stuff out? <laughs> well, right now you're looking at the team. It's the yeah. two of us. <laughs> we, do you sleep? <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, not much. Um, but what we, what we do, we handle everything except the collection of the data. So, um, because that, that really gets into more forensic evidence, handling of evidence, which we're not at that point yet. We'd like to expand into that field because there's a huge opportunity in and having an IT team that can say, okay, this is the information we need, and then be able to go get it. Um, but what we do now, so we take those collected data sets, everything that's already collected, and then we move through that. But along with Meredith does most of the legal review and consulting with our clients, and then I manage everything behind the scene. And then we have really good software that's kind of part, part of, you know, the technology just allows you to do so much more mm -hmm. with, with less people. And so that's um, kind of the message we try to explain to attorneys. You can be a lot more efficient with fewer people by, by harnessing the power of, of some of this technology. Did you have to build that yourself? No, no, we, we licensed with someone else who had already had an end-to-end software, so. Hi, Keenan Abner with uh, Summa Text. Um, talk a little bit about how you found your price point that you chose because uh, it seems like you guys save them a ton of money, and that 3200 is a very low price to um, pay for that. So, 
That's actually one of our challenges. Um, because we are targeting small firms and solo practitioners, and a lot of attorneys, especially plaintiffs, work on um, contingency, so they don't get paid unless they win. Okay, so we have to be very careful with our price point. We can't come in and say $50,000 off the top. They, they're just, it won't work. So our consulting plans um, is one way that we help the small firm get started because attorneys are also very risk adverse and they're not going to spend a ton of money if you can't prove that, that you, can, you can help them. So our, our bottom, our lowest price plan is $900 a month with one software license and about 10 to 15 hours of consulting time. And so that gets them in. And what we do is we introduce them to the software. We show them the difference between PDFs and native documents. We help them with the discovery requests and actually ha how do you ask for data and, and really teach them at that beginning, that entry level. And then once, once we do a few cases with them and show that we're really we really are worth we're able to to move them up the up the services chain <laughs> to where we are making making more money i'm mason grasher with the bond exchange um a lot of the value that's uh, i guess uh realized is in the junk as you as you yes. eloquently described it so a lot of that junk is defined based on the filters that you would inevitably uh, set up to search the metadata for the documents. So to me, that's, that's the crux, is that you've got to communicate, that's your sales in a way, and that you've got to communicate that these uh, lawyers, these attorneys that are used to conducting business a certain way from a search or discovery standpoint, um, can find what they need or filter what they need mm -hmm. by, by the metadata. So. Is that an easy, I mean, y'all speak the lingo, obviously. Uh, you're not talking to a room full of attorneys. But that, to me, that's the obstacle I would think is that uh, you don't have to search the, 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 the traditional way. You can search another way, and mm -hmm. you have to take that concept into a filterable software. Yeah. What, what we found, um, attorneys are also not typically known to be very tech savvy. And so... They're, they're, they've done, we've practiced law the same way for 250 years, and it's just in the last 10 years that now e-discovery has come on the scene. So it's going to be a very slow change for attorneys, even though technology is moving so fast. So that's, that's one of the reasons we started our business is there's a huge gap in competency at this point with attorneys and data. Um, I, go ahead. I was going to say, and as far as the junk goes and those types of filters, um, a lot of that, you know, for example, would be someone put all the emails in there and someone was getting Facebook notifications sent to their work email. Someone else is getting their LinkedIn. So, you know, immediately I go through whatever the discovery request was and know that has, this is completely irrelevant. But also, none of it goes away. We, we put it in a separate folder and it can always be searched if you think there's something else there. But it's just helping attorneys kind of define the scope of what are you really looking for, what really needs to have an attorney's eyes on and what else can we use search filters to get rid of and for example duplicates are you know t there's tons of duplicates and the email chains we can give them the longest thread instead of them having to see all the back and forth and um, just those types of things can also really reduce the volume we found uh, one other point is um, with the attorneys clients love this more than attorneys do because the attorneys would be happy to bill you for 32,000 documents. They'd be happy to make $96,000 on a document review, but their clients are getting more savvy and saying we're not paying you for this. So one of the, one of, another market for us is in-house counsel and business executives that understand they have a huge amount of costs in document review and so we can, we, we're the step in between inside counsel, us, outside counsel. And so we, we have, we've got conflicting markets here because attorneys would love to bill you forever for that, but um, once they understand that, their clients are more savvy than the attorneys are at this point, so we're, we're really leveraging that to our benefit and, and to, to businesses' benefit, to our clients' benefit. My name's Sydney, Sydney Brazel, and I was just wondering when y'all got started. We've been in business for about a year. Um, we started our really putting our whole ideas together January of last year. And then we launched, um, officially launched uh, last year at the Arkansas Bar Meeting, uh, which happens every June. And we just had our second booth there. So we've been, we've been in business for a year. All right, we can have one more question. 
Hi, I'm Shannon Chamberlain. I'm currently doing research in service learning and higher education. Uh, what I was interested in finding out is about your relationship with the lawyers. Uh, is this an ongoing relationship that makes money for you uh, through consulting and so forth over time? Because you're talking about a pretty small pool in Little Rock right now, but then moving out in the states, of course, it's be bigger. But. We um, yes, it is an ongoing. It's an ongoing relationship. On the consulting side, we're training them up to where they're able to run um, and do a lot of this on their own. So, so we spend a lot of time on the front end, face to face, and then as they learn, they they figure out, okay, we know how to how to draft discovery requests, but they need our software, and so now we have that they're used to that software and they come to that come to us for that service long term. Great, so we have a tradition. Uh, every startup that talks at a million cups, the last thing we always ask is what is one thing that this community can do to support your business and your growth? Tell everyone you know about us. Um, that's, especially at the very beginning, that's always the hardest part is, and, and we've struggled with this, what, is our, what exactly is our message? As we've gotten out there and met with our clients and met, met with our market, we've had to change our messaging. If you walk in and ask an attorney, do you do e-discovery? Nope. I don't do that because that's Enron or that's they think that's huge very technical law and if they're if they are representing a client that uses technology they are doing e-discovery they don't know it but that's that's it so any attorney that represents a client that has a smartphone is doing e-discovery so please um, just share our information and send them our way we'd love to talk to we talk to anybody who'll listen to us really so that's, that's the best thing for us. Thank you so much. Fantastic, thank you. And we know where to find them. Please, um, we'll, we can post this information online. We'll also have this video afterwards and um, come to one, one Million Cups more often and you'll see Tiffany around, I'm sure. So um, our next guest.